الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed previous nations for various reasons. And then he tells us that he would not dist- have destroyed certain people had they turned to him, had they repented, and had they believed and developed their relationship with him. This is something amazing. One might say, why would he want us to develop a relationship with him if we'd like to protect ourselves from being destroyed? Simple. Because he created us. That's why. The one who creates is the one who decides what will happen. So if you look at Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 96, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Had the people of the towns believed and develop their consciousness of Allah, what we know as taqwa, then we would have opened the barakat or the blessings from the heavens and from the earth for them. But they didn't. So what happened? We destroyed them. From this I learned that if I'd like to achieve contentment, I need two things. I need to believe in Allah and develop a relationship with Allah. Believing in Allah meaning I'm convinced that I came from a maker and I'm going to go back to the maker and I worship him alone and I make sure that I worship him the way he wants me to worship him. Secondly, developing a relationship with Allah also known as taqwa Allah which includes the consciousness of Allah, it includes the love of Allah, it includes the fear of the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once I've developed that I know that the Almighty will not punish me. I will achieve contentment. When negatives come in my life, I'm convinced that this is the best thing that could have happened. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about this. He actually says, uh, ﷺ, the affairs of a believer are strange. They're amazing. When good comes in his direction, he thanks Allah, so it's better for him. And when bad befalls him, he is patient, so that is better for him. This is the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we would like to achieve contentment, we also need to look into the stories of the previous prophets. Those whom Allah has destroyed in the past. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them? What exactly happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and he knows best. So he's made mention of some of this. Take a look at Surah Al-A'raf, the surah that we're talking about right now, and we will find a story of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was destroyed for various reasons. We need to look at what happened to him, where he was at one stage in his life, what he did that resulted in his downfall. No matter how much he had, he was actually doomed. He had authority, he had wealth, He had so much on earth that he actually called himself a god. He actually told people to worship him besides Allah. He said he is the god, he is the decider, he is the giver of life. He called someone who was in prison and released the person. He brought another person and executed. And he says, look, I gave one life and I actually caused the death of one without realizing who was he fooling. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of his destruction. He was haughty, he was arrogant. These stories keep repeating themselves in the Quran for us to learn. If you'd like contentment, you need to protect yourself from the qualities of the Pharaoh. Sometimes the way we behave, the oppression, when we, for example, oppress people, when we are uh, abusive, when we commit any form of sin and crime that is similar to that of the Pharaoh, even in a lower level or on a lower level, we would definitely lose a lot of the happiness and contentment that we so much need. So that is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the stories such as the one of the Pharaoh. Then Allah says thereafter, verse number 146 of Surah Al-A'raf, Allah says, Those who are arrogant and haughty, we will definitely turn away the signs of Allah or we will turn them away 
from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how many signs they see, they won't understand, they won't look, they won't comprehend, they won't take heed because they are haughty. If you want guidance, one of the qualities you need is to drop and to cut out the arrogance and the haughtiness. Don't think you're a know-it-all. Keep searching for guidance, look at revelation again and again, keep looking at it and asking yourself, am I following what Allah and His Messenger want me to follow? Then a day will come when you will be rightly guided, you will be able to achieve contentment and happiness because you are following the truth. The moment you know the truth, the truth comes about with satisfaction, with contentment, with conviction. That belief brings about a sense of happiness and joy and it brings about a firm sense of security. I'm secure from the harm within this world as well as that which may come in the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Those who are arrogant and haughty on earth, our signs are turned away from them. They don't see them, they don't take heed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Look at the people at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who heard the verses recited by him to them. When he recited the verses to them, they still didn't accept the message, some of them, because of their haughtiness, their love of this worldly material life, to the degree that they forgot there was a maker they were going to return to. That's why they lost contentment. As wealthy as Abu Jahl was, he was not a happy man. As wealthy as Abu Lahab was, he wasn't a, health, a, a, a happy man. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us very gently to say, do you know what? Allah, you need to study his names, his qualities in order to recognize him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 180 of Surah Al-A'raf. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Indeed, Allah has beautiful names, beautiful names. So call him using these names. That is Allah. He is telling us you will gain closeness to Allah using the names of Allah, studying the names of Allah, understanding them, memorizing them. My brothers and sisters were talking about contentment. I promise you, if you were to study the names of Allah, not only will you guarantee your contentment in this world, but you will guarantee your place in Jannatul Firdaus in paradise. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, indeed, Whoever is to study 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, memorize them, protect them, learn them, use them to call out to Allah, they will be granted paradise. Because now you've recognized your maker. And that's the whole purpose of creation is for us to recognize the maker, to worship him alone, to turn to him. And that's it, subhanallah. In that particular case, we would be doing good and abstaining from bad. We would be the most content of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that success. So I encourage you to look into the names of Allah. Repeat them, learn them, see them, memorize them. And you need to know exactly what they entail. That will bring about a lot of comfort. I give you an example. When a person is sick and ill, they would call out to Allah using the names, following this instruction that Allah says, I have beautiful names, use them to call out to me. The Almighty is the name of Allah. The owner of cure is the name of Allah. The owner of sustenance is the name of Allah. So Ash-Shafi, Ar-Razzaq, Al-Tawwab, Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, the most forgiving and so on. All these are the names of Allah. When we look at them, we begin to smile. This is my creator. This is my creator. I worship him and him alone. And I have conviction and hope in his mercy. I know for a fact that I'm going to go to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all to paradise. Amin. Then we have another point of contentment also in the same surah, Surah Al-A'raf. Do you know when you are listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're meant to be concentrating, you're meant to be listening, you're meant to be thinking, you're meant to be paying attention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want the mercy of Allah, and the mercy of Allah, by the way, includes contentment. Remember that. So if, you're, if you really want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then listen to this verse. Verse number 204 of Surah Al-A'raf. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the words of Allah are being recited, then listen very attentively and, and be quiet in order 
that you achieve the mercy of Allah. Which means if you want to achieve the mercy of Allah, whenever the Quran is being recited, listen very attentively and be quiet. My brothers and sisters, how many of us are actually quiet when we listen to the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we complain about loss of contentment and losing the happiness that we had at one stage. I think it's important for us to take the Quran seriously, its recitation, and whenever it is being recited or even explained, try to listen. It, is, it will be a source of uh, contentment for you and for everyone around you. My brothers, my sisters, one very important factor that I wish to mention, the Quran is so powerful that when you listen to its explanation, it will seem as though someone is addressing you and your problems, your issues, as though they knew your life and your problems. You will wonder, how did this person know what exactly to address? The reality is it is from the maker. He knew, he knows, he will know and he created everyone. So the verses that are recited and explained coming to you will definitely impact upon you in a very, very positive way regarding issues that you are facing in your life. That's why Allah says, listen attentively. It will make sense and it will definitely impact upon you as though someone knew your, your life and your problems. Yes, Allah does know your life and He does know your problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. We move on to the next surah, Surah Al-Anfal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the opening verses makes mention of the successful ones, those who are the true believers. He says, those are the true believers. So who are these true believers? Listen, verse number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Two qualities, those who establish their prayer and they spend from that which we have given them. Two qualities. Number one, develop your relationship with Allah. Number two, look after those who don't have much the rest of the creatures of Allah, and you will definitely achieve contentment and success. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب